Okay, so now we can try to apply these concepts about uh, realizing HTTP APIs uh, on our uh, Q&A website. If you download uh, from, from GitHub, uh, I created uh, a folder called the QA Server Exercise 11. Just remember that we are on the server side, so let's not mix, mix things up. From now on, we'll have two different projects, uh, one for the React interface and the other for the API server. One will run in the browser, the other will run in Node, okay, with different libraries, with different methods for running them, and so on. Okay, we'll have the two working. Uh, from next week, we'll have two windows, one for the server and one for the, um, the client uh, running together and communicating together. Right now, we are on the server side. So if you see uh, this project uh, for the server, is very, very minimal as a dependency. It doesn't have any files, any project. Uh, I, I just created a new uh, project uh, and imported Express, SQLite, and DayJS into it. So package.json is very minimal in this case, okay? And uh, I already copied two files. I just adapted, I took uh, the files from um, week number four when we were doing, we were playing with the uh, uh, SQLite, you remember, probably. And I just reorganized a bit the information. I put the object answer and question into a model file, let's say. No? A file would contain the model classes uh, uh, the constructors called QA, and I separated the uh, functions dealing with the database in a DAO file. Mm? So DAO is remember me of data access object, so an object for um, handling data databases. And this module is the only one that will uh, uh, talk with the SQLite database. And I just copied and pasted and added a couple of methods like a read question given an ID, so given an ID, I read a question from the database, how? I make a select uh, using uh, the normal uh, database get method and so on. So all, everything that we did with the, with the database, uh, I wrote them into different functions. Read question, create question, that takes a question object, uh, list questions to give me a list of, of uh, questions, list answers, create answers, something like that. And I exported all these functions. Uh, just the syntax for exporting and importing, we are in node, so it's not import and export, but uh, is require and uh, exports not. Mm -hmm. But just a matter of syntax. So right now I have everything more or less ready. I also made a minor modification to the database. Uh, um, of, uh, so this is in the project, I already committed uh, a copy of the SQLite database. Uh, which is basically the same as before, except that I uh, specified, well, how do I write that? Uh, that, uh, um, no, it didn't work. It's not the same. Yesterday it was there. Okay, uh, maybe only question, sorry. I, uh, uh, no, I, I selected auto increment for the ID of question and, and answers. Maybe I am uh, opening the wrong version. Never mind. Uh, the idea is that to have uh, uh, the ID. So there's a general question, generic question when dealing with data in the database. Who generates the ID? The ID can be unique, should be, must be unique. And so either the client uh, should be able to generate a new unique ID when he creates a new object. But it's difficult when we have many clients all together. So maybe it's easy to increment a number, but who does increment it? If I have two clients that are trying con to connect at the same time, the risk of both incrementing the same value and uh, come up with duplicate values. So the best place to increment, uh, to create a new ID is as close to the database as possible. And uh, possibly in this case, uh, the ID could be generated by the database itself. And I don't remember, I don't know uh, why he didn't remember that. Uh, ah, because it's the wrong, it's the wrong file, sorry. Open database. Uh, C data 
with application week 10 No, okay, never mind. Uh, I should have an auto increment. Uh, there's an auto increment option for primary keys uh, where if I insert a new element uh, without any, without specifying the, the, the ID value, then we'll get a new one automatically. Mm -hmm. So we don't uh, risk of having any. I did it yesterday, I don't know. I should have made some mistake with the files. Um, Okay. Oh, anyway. So uh, I, for this reason, I modify some of the queries. So, for example, the, when I when I create an answer, the ID is ignored because the database will assign you a new one and stuff. There's details like that. Okay. We'll we'll come to this detail when we uh, connect the server and the client uh, uh, to understand uh, who creates these numbers and how to discover the numbers that were created. But for now, we're just at the basic level. We know we have some objects, the structure of some objects, and we have some functions that allow us to read and store these objects from the database. All things that we already know since week number four, okay? Now, we want to create a, a server. So let's create four. Uh, index.js in uh, Express for responding to a set uh, of uh, uh, APIs. So, but so, but before, okay, we can copy the structure of the database. It's always the same. So the first lines are the same, and the last line is the same. All the fun is in between. Which route do we want to define? Which routes do we want to do we need to define? So let's reason about that for a moment. Let's make a file for reasoning. Uh, readme for ib dot down. So uh, what operations do we need to perform? And how do we map them? We are thinking about a, a, a box, a black box, stored somewhere, which is running my database, and allowing my React application to do operation on the database. So which operation should be support? Well, question and answer. Should we should create a new answer. Get the list. Uh, of all answers. Uh, should we support deleting an answer? No, maybe not. Should we support modifying an answer? Not right now, maybe we can add it later. So these are probably the only two operations that we can do with the answers. Get the list of all answers with full details, which is different from get the list. One possibility is get a list of all the answers with full details of, every, of all of them, or we could implement two different methods. Get the list of IDs of, of the answers. Sorry, questions. Then we come to the answers the, uh, of the questions, and then get uh, the full details uh, of, a, of a question given the ID. No, there are two strategies. One, give me the list of all the questions uh, with all the text, author, and date, and everything for each of them. So I have everything in one call, one big JSON list with many objects in it. But it may become large. So maybe there's another option. You can get uh, 
the list of just the IDs of the question, and then one by one, you can ask for the details of each ID. At the end, uh, I can get the same information in a different way. Okay, so the, the first one is easier, basically. If, if the information doesn't get too big, uh, it's nice, it's fine. Hmm? So I could say, okay, they, these could be optional calls that we don't need to implement right now. Then, uh, answers. Given a question, give me the list of answers. So get the list of all answers with full details to a specific question. Does it make sense uh, to have uh, a list of all the answers regardless of the question? All the answers for any question? I don't think there is any point in having that kind of information. I don't think that in the front end we should have any where the list of all the answers regardless of the question. So we don't need to provide a service for extracting this kind of information. We will only show the list of answers for a given question, not for all of them. And so we only return this data. We are playing a game in which we are imagining the type of, of operations that can be done on the database, but at the same time, the subset of these operations that could be really useful for our front end. So we are doing some, we are a bit in the middle, okay, from between, okay, I want to support every possible operation, creation, modify, modification, listing, search, and so on, on the database. I can provide a very long list of uh, functionality. And on the other hand, okay, what do I need uh, to populate my web pages? I'm not sure yet because I still have to design that part of the database, but I can, I can imagine. So as always, it's an incremental job here. And since it's incremental, it's better to have it clear, <laughs> documented somewhere, okay? So, guess the list of uh, all answers. I, if I already have uh, the list of all, all answers with full details, I don't need uh, a method for getting the details of a single answer, probably. Uh, then what I need to be able to do is to add a new answer to a specific Question. Uh, there's no sense in writing create a new answer. I cannot create an answer unless I link it to a question. Right? So creating an answer by itself doesn't have any meaning. I only create a new answer and, and add it to a specific question. The two operations cannot be separated. Then what I can do, I can delete an answer from a question. And I add uh, also an edit button that they played with. So modify, update. Uh, the content of an existing answer by keeping the same question. I can modify the content, but I cannot move the answer to another question. So I can modify the title, the name, and so on, maybe not the score. Uh, for sure, I cannot modify the question that it's linked to or its ID. Okay, I think that's all. 
In our examples, we have, uh, on the latest version uh, of last week, uh, we have the list of all questions. We didn't have the functionality for creating new question yet uh, in the front end, but it's easy to add. You have the list of all questions. You click on a single question, you have to display the list of the answers. So we need an information, uh, um, an endpoint for extracting this information. And on that, we can uh, add a new answer, create a new answer, delete an answer, update an answer. That's it. If we implement this one, two, three, four, five, six routes, we should have all the operations on the server side that will allow any client uh, application to exploit information in the database, to run with information in the database. Okay? So these are the operations that we need to implement. I'm oh, no, sorry, what? What? An answer. I was forgetting the easiest one. Okay, so how do we map this into a HTTP? First of all, I need to specify which kind of type of types of elements of of uh, yeah, elements entities we have. Of course, we only have two types of entities here: question and answer. And we should agree on what is the JSON representation of these objects. This JSON representation will be used when it creates them and also will be used when we retrieve them. So in this case, uh, it's an object with a question. Uh, okay, we have uh, the model here, so it's easy. The question contains ID, text, author, and date. ID, text, author, and date. Okay. Um, on creation, the ID should not provide it. And the date is an ISO formatted string. In JSON, we don't have objects. We cannot transfer the JS object. We need to serialize it in somewhere. ID is a number. Text and author are strings. So that Whenever we create one of these objects or whenever we want to parse one of these objects, we actually know actually structure, okay? In JSON. And the answer are the same. No? Here we have an ID. Let's pick the model. Text, author, oh, sorry, answer. ID, text, author, score, date. So it's an ID, text, author, in the order is, uh, do we have, uh, first we have score and then date. And the same comments apply here. We define the entities, the representation of the entities. Next, we define the mapping of these entities into URIs, and later we define the operation. Then we can implement. So, to in JSON. Uh, okay, so create a new question. Remember, uh, we have a entities and collections of entities. There are only two data types, uh, and of course, relationships. Creation, creating a new question means adding a new object on the collection of questions. So we are 
going to make a post on questions. The name of a collection is a plural noun. Posting on a collection means adding a new object. In the body, we have uh, uh, the question object. The JSON representation of a question object. And getting the list of all questions, it's a get on the collection. There's nobody in the request of the get. The response, response will be a list of answer or question objects. a JSON serialization of the list of question objects. Getting the list of all the answers to a specific question. Getting a list means doing a get from a collection. Collection of answers, but they are not answers in general, they are answers to a question. So I could select the question. Okay. I need to do a get because I'm reading questions. A given question. Answers. So at the end of the day, I'm asking a list of answers. But these answers are not all of them, are those that are in relationship with the specific question. And uh, you have no request body, we have the response body that will contain a list of answer objects. Answer with a W. Then, create a new answer and add it to a specific question. So create uh, means post. It's not post answers, because we are not creating a new answer out of the blue, but we are creating a new answer in relationship with a given question. So the, the URL is that of a relationship again with a given question. So we are posting in the same address that we were getting before. Post. We are posting here what? A, uh, the body of the request body will contain the JSON representation of a single answer. Object. So in this case, we have the information about which answer to add and also the question to which she must be linked. Then how do we implement that uh, depends on the database structure. We can have a foreign key, we can have a relationship table. It's an implementation detail on the database. Of course, we, we, we need also to design the database in a consistent way. But we don't need to map exactly one-to-one -one the APIs to the database tables and so on. Delete an answer from a question. Well, deleting is, of course, uh, delete as a HTTP method. I have two possible ideas for this. One could be delete answer parameter answer ID. And the other could be delete Questions, question ID, answers, 
answer ID. The second one matches the definition. Delete an answer, which one? This answer, D, from a question, which one? This question. The previous one is simpler. I'm deleting an answer. That's it. And if the answer is gone, of course, it will not be in relationship with, with, in relationship with that question anymore. Okay, we could implement both, so both either variant, not both of them, either variant. Okay, uh, I would prefer the first one because actually I'm deleting that answer, and that answer only lives in relation with, with that question. But I know that uh, normally it's not a rule. Four segments are too many. Usually you can do everything you need with three segments. So if you feel the need of a fourth segment, maybe the, uh, the only question that you have to ask yourself is whether this ID is a strong ID or a weak ID. Remember database courses. A weak identifier doesn't, is not enough by itself because it needs to be, to, to be coupled with an identifier of another stronger object. But it's a bad idea to use weak identifiers anyway. So it's better to have an idea of the answer that uniquely identifies the answer. The answer will not be one, two, three, five for the first question, and then on the second question, the idea of the answer will not be one, two, three, four, and, uh, again. No? It should be five, six, seven, eight. It should be unique. So an idea of an answer should uniquely identify the answer from the universe of all the possible answers. Then, of course, I will reach them only going through questions. But I don't need the information about the question ID to understand which answer needs to be deleted. OK? So it can be done, but in my opinion, it's overkill. Too much information. I don't need it. It's not wrong, OK? We are not talking about right or wrong. We are talking about simple or complex. And the delete doesn't need any other further information. I'm killing that. I don't need to provide information or to receive any kind of information back. Delete. Uh, the last two. Update the content of an existing answer. Update means post. Post replaces an existing object with another one. So I need to provide in the URL the identity of the object. Which is the answer I need to modify? And this I keep the same reasoning as before. I just need the ID of the answer. I don't need to specify belonging to the question or whatever. Oh, sorry, not post, put. Post would create a new answer and should only, I can only post to collections. Put can only put to elements, to items, not to collections. So I need to specify the URI of an element. And in the request body, I can put the um, an answer object where beware the ID and the score and the question ID will not be modified. So this may, I receive an object, but I cannot change the object by modifying the score, giving myself the score of 200. Okay? I can modify the text, I can modify my name, for example. But the put doesn't really blindly replace, in this case, okay, we don't want to blindly replace an object with another. We want to replace it, that information that needs to be replaced or can be replaced. 
Hmm? And finally, voting an answer. This is more difficult because voting an answer is a way of modifying the answer itself. Right. Uh, it could be a put. And then we give uh, an object with only the new score. Well, uh, this should not be the same as this. So in, in a way, and uh, we should we cannot reuse the same route for two different reasons because in this case we are expecting an answer, full answer object, in this case we are only expecting a new score. So maybe something like vote or score. Then okay, we, are, we only want to modify that property of the object. It's not really a relationship, but in a way with, we are a bit out of the rules here. Okay, because in the relational model, we can only read CRUD, no? create, read, update, and delete. Here we are modifying according to a given mechanism, given algorithm. So, the, of course, it will not fit nicely in our framework. Okay? We, we need to bend the rules somewhere, somehow. Or uh, maybe always put, uh, but uh, something like... Uh, Both, I don't know. Request body can be up. Or down in the future. For now we didn't implement the down voting, but you see the difference. In one case we are making a put with a new score. In the other case, we are telling the server increase the score of this answer. And the server will do increase, will do the, uh, incre the increment. Which one do you prefer? One or two? And suffer one? And suffer two? Why? Yes, the, the, the correct answer is two. Why? Uh, you, that's a minimalist uh, uh, view saying that, okay, uh, so I don't need to know the previous score. I, the, actually, I know the previous score because maybe it's displayed on the page. I'm showing, remember our form. I already know that. So you are worried about the, the complexity of passing a score, which is already done by the by Express. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. But I, you know, I have a score. The score is five. Okay, I, I know that it's my, my my web page. I can tell the server increase it, or I can tell the server set it to six. What's the difference? What one? Yeah? Computation is the, the sorry. Computation is the, the computation, yes. The, the difference is that the increment itself, in the first case, will be done in the client. In the second case, it will be done on the server. We are talking about a split nanosecond here. So there's not performance the reason. There is a race condition in the first case. If you have two different clients, two people in the world that are voting the same question at the same time, 
right? Both clients will have uh, their own page with the question, with the answer, with score five. They click on vote. My browser computes six. The other guy clicks on vote. His browser computes six, and they both tell the server, override with six, and override with six. And so I'm missing an increment. Because I'm increasing, I'm manipulating a value that is no longer valid, may not longer be valid. When the client is far from the server, the data that the client has, it's only a, it's, you should always think it's as an older version of the real data. So the increment should be atomic, should be done in a place where reading the old value and storing the new value should never be broken, should happen in, instantaneously or concur uh, concur synchronously, sorry, is the right word. So I tell the so in the other case, I have two guys with the second option, two guys on their browser. The first one sees five, the second one sees five, the first one clicks on both, and the server, the client tells the server, increase that number. And the second one tells the server, increase the number. And the server will receive two commands. One, to, to increase the number, okay, it will increase from five to six. And the second time, another increase, okay, I will go from six to seven. So the, real, the, the actual number will become seven. The problem will be the client, that each of them will believe that the new score is six until they check with the server and see, okay, oh, it, it's seven now. Because somebody else changed the number while I was waiting, I was doing something else. That's a refreshing, refreshing the data issue. The important thing is that the real data is in the server, the real truth is stored in the server, and that is where update operation should happen. Okay? So this is a, it's a, it's a serious problem in distributed systems. You should never rely on some information that you got from the server. Because it was valid when you received it, but maybe in the meantime somebody else manipulated that. This is true for everything. When I'm creating a new, maybe I'm, I'm on a website, I'm creating a new user, I'm signing up, I, I choose one uh, nickname, and maybe somebody else in the world in the same time is choosing the same nickname. So the client, the browser, has no authority to say if the name is valid or not. Only the server, which has the real database with all the names already taken, has it. So it's a serious problem with no easy solutions, okay? Because it's a concurrency problem. Um, we should be aware and try to avoid as much as possible of falling into that trap. Always imagine that there are hundreds of people that are doing the same action as you in the same time. Hmm? So this one is a, is a no. It creates a, a race condition, leading to the loss of data in this case, or inconsistent data. If we have at least two concurrent clients. Right? Okay, that's our plan, and now we just uh, need to take one by one these methods and implement them in uh, Express. So in index, we should create all the routes that we need. So they were in order, post questions, app.post uh, 
maybe let's call it API questions. Now put an API in front in the case we have some other. Usually the suggestion is to put always API and the version number, the best practice. So that if we, are, if we want to evolve the, the API with the new methods or more powerful methods, uh, we have a namespace to change. With version two, then maybe we can have breaking changes to the behavior of the question. Hmm? But maybe for the moment, uh, at least we, we, we scope them under an API. Uh, and then we have a request response and the body for that. So then we'll fill it. Second, uh, is uh, get questions, okay, app.get, API questions, callback, request response, body. Then we have uh, get uh, the answer for a question, get questions, question D answers, okay, app.get, it's a get method on a path which is dynamic that contains a dynamic segment. API, questions, colon question ID, slash answers. Callback, request response. And then we have uh, this one, create a new answer. It's a post, app.post, API, what was that? Questions, question and the answer. Answers. Request response. Then, uh, delete, answer sensor ID, app dot this is easy, delete, API, answers, S W E R S, answer ID, request response, body. Update, put a new answer up. This is identical to this one with a put. And the last one is also a put of the vote. So a similar one. But we have a bot segment at the end. So these are the routes that correspond to the operation. And now we implement them. Let's start from an easy one, get questions. Get questions means uh, I have no parameters to process. I only have to make a query for giving me the whole list of questions. I already had this DAO file with a list questions method. List questions uh, just extracts all the questions and create question objects. And it will resolve this list of question objects. So we can just use that. So we need to import that. So const uh, my DAO object is taking from um, QI DAO, and we also maybe can extract the question and answer objects, constructor functions, okay, from the other.
so that we need to create uh, some objects we have the, fun the, the constructor function okay in this case I have one object DAO with all the properties corresponding to the functions in this case I destructured the, 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 um, the import and just extracted the two function names but so I'm accessing the information that were defined in the previous files uh, in this case of the get what we need to do is to call the DAO dot uh, list answers. It doesn't have any parameters. No, list questions, sorry, list questions. It doesn't have any parameters and this returns a promise. So we should uh, handle the promise uh, with await or with then catch, as you prefer. Maybe use the then the dang catch. Remember the then returns a result. And when then we do something and the catch returns an error. And then we do something. Okay, it's all asynchronous operations. We are receiving an HTTP request asynchronously, we are launching a, dat a database query asynchronously, and when the query completes, we will complete the request by sending a response. The result is a list of uh, objects, so it should be already what we need. So probably it's just enough to say response send the JSON of the result. And in case of an error, we should send a response, maybe with a status of, uh, I don't know, let's say 500 for a moment. Yeah, and then we send the response uh, with the error message. Remember, we have another object that was created by the promise. Of course, there's a lot that they should check what kind of error it is, uh, how can it, whether it can be recovered, is it, uh, but it cannot be the client's uh, fault because we have no parameters here. There cannot be nothing, anything wrong with this request, okay? So this is very minimal because we didn't do any special processing. We already called a method that we were lucky enough uh, or clever enough uh, to have uh, this method already determine the type of object uh, that we want to see in the JSON. Does it work? I don't know. Let's try to run it. So something is already wrong here. Module not found of what? Uh, ah, sorry, I didn't install the modules. I only copied the package to JSON, but didn't uh, download all the packages. And something's wrong. Uh, Where are you? Line four. Express. Is there? Did not found. What did it? Package JSON index the JS. Yeah, of course the same. What did I do wrong? Index the JS. Line four is this one. Ah, maybe Morgan, Morgan, sorry. 
was not the impacted.json. Not enough. Come on. So let me just check whether the Okay, so it was Morgan that di didn't load properly. What's the name of this package? Sorry, I added there in the other project. Morgan. But here, ah, now it's there. Okay, so sorry for the bug. Okay, so right now we should have started the project and the only API that we implemented is this one. For testing it, we create uh, a test uh, HTTP file. Uh, we have one get uh, questions, right? Oh, API questions. Send request. Uh, HTTP localhost 3000. Okay, and in this case, I have uh, an array, so a list of objects. Each object is, has a structure of a question. Okay, and so we do the same for the others. Uh, posting a question is a bit more complex because we should extract the question object from where? From the body of the request. And we should uh, then call the, what is that? Uh, create question function from the DAO. And for example, we, Let's try first to write a test. So if you want to post a new question, we should remember to say that the question should be in JSON. And the question is an object with the proper fields that are text, new question, author, Nobody. Date. Today, 2023, 0509. And uh, do we need any other parameters? Uh, ID, text, no. Okay, that's okay. The ID should be assigned by the database. So this is the body I'm sending. And to check whether everything is okay, this body should be accessible in the request.body attribute. Let's see if it's true. We are doing the post. And you see that in the output, I'm printing an object with these attributes. So these attributes could be used to construct. Uh, you see that I'm still waiting because I didn't close the request. 
of the caller is still waiting for the server to respond. Uh, we need to create uh, a question object with this data. So we create a question, a new question object with the ID can be null, it's not used in any, any way. The text is request.body.text. The author is request.body.author. The date is request.body.date. And once we do that, we can ask the DAO to create a new question by giving the question object. And then we wait for the query to finish to close the, 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 the HTTP response. Then. Uh, they, there is no result that I should expect here, but anyway, I should collect it. Uh, Response.end. Nothing to tell you if everything went okay. Otherwise, I need to send you an error. Uh, Response.status. of an error dot send the error message. So let's see if this is working. Send request. Okay, it gave me an error called the SQLite error, thank you. So something went wrong. In fact, if I get a request, uh, I don't see the new one. So I should be, okay. So there's something wrong in the implementation, maybe on the data that I'm passing, or I'm just getting this SQLite error. I need to trace back uh, the reason of the error. Maybe I need to put uh, into the DAO something more about the error uh, there was a message attribute or a text attribute, I don't remember. Maybe a message. Four values for three columns. Okay, I, there was a, I made a mistake in the query because I removed the ID, but I didn't modify the query pattern. Sorry, my mistake. And so we go back here. It went. At least it didn't give any error. To check whether the actual ad was uh, executed, they can get again the list and see if we have, yeah, one new element, exactly the one we just had. This is the idea. Of course, we need to do error checking, validation of the inputs. So what happens if the if the, the, the request body here doesn't contain all the attributes that we need there, okay? We should avoid having undefined errors here. So we need to check before and do some validation, return errors otherwise. But apart from that, uh, checking for strange error conditions, this is the idea. Mapping, uh, oh, the design part was here. Now, we just need to map each of these high level operations into the query of group of queries that need to be executed on the database. And if the query goes well, we return a positive result or some data. Otherwise, we should return some error information. OK. So there should be, so uh, that's all for today.